So I'm here to talk about cartoons from around the world as a learning tool. Uh, as was mentioned, my name is Jared Royach. I'm an editor of cartoons myself. And I'm also editor-in-chief of a website called cartoonmovement.com. And we're a website for professional editorial cartoons. And part of what we do uh, is to combine professional editorial cartooning uh, with education. And as you hopefully see, uh, that works really well. Um, so first what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about Cartoon Movement and what we do, uh, about editorial cartoons in general, uh, and about the value of international editorial cartoons, and also the value of editorial cartoons for education. And I'm going to talk about a case study project we did uh, this year, which was the collaboration of 300 students from five high schools throughout the Netherlands, uh, which we uh, put together with our network of cartoonists to come up with cartoons. But I'll talk about that later on. Um, this is our platform, cartoonmovement.com. Um, and how we define ourselves is the internet's number one publishing platform for editorial cartoons. So um, we have a global network of 124 cartoons from over 70 countries, um, 73 countries in fact. Um, and the cool thing is we have cartoons in a lot of different places, so not only in the US or not only in Europe, but also in places like Costa Rica, in Nepal, in Sudan. Uh, and what that means is they get a lot of different perspectives in cartoons. Um, and what we do, our core business, is to publish a cartoon on a daily basis, publish a perspective on a, on a daily basis. Um, and our philosophy for this is there's more than one truth. And what we try to show, and also in education try to show, so not only to the general audience, but also when we work for projects in education, um, is that there are multiple ways you can perceive an issue. There are multiple ways to, to, to look at an issue. And what we believe is that how you look at an issue uh, depends on where you're from in the world and depends on in what context you live. So this is how our website looks. Um, and I'll just show you some cartoons that we've published in the, in the, in the last month. Um, so this is a cartoon from Peru. It was made a week before Gaddafi was, uh, was killed by the rebels. Uh, the cartoon from Syria. Obviously, we have a lot of cartoons from uh, from Arab Spring. Uh, as you can see, because we're an international network, uh, we don't use a lot of text in our cartoons. Our cartoonists uh, work mainly in symbols, work in, in powerful visuals to get the message across. Uh, and that's also what we try to teach students: uh, teach them a universal language of symbols and show them how some symbols are universal, while other symbols uh, are really dependent on the region or the country where you're from. So this is another one that was made uh, after Osama bin Laden was, uh, was killed by the American government. That's also a very powerful perspective. Um, when we talk about cartoons for education, um, we try to say that cartoons have a couple of different roles. And, uh, well, this is one of them. Uh, cartoons should be thought-provoking. Um, this one says a lot about democracy, it says a lot about freedom. But the thing is, you can talk a long time about it. Why? It applies to a lot of situations. It could apply to the elections in Egypt. It could also apply to another country, for instance, Belarus, where the, the president organized the elections and 99% voted for him. Uh, you can ask how fair are these elections. Um, it can also apply to a democracy, in a, an election in a democratic, democratic nation, where you're asking yourself, what are the political choices? And do people really have a choice? So, what it's meant to do is to stir up thought and to let people think about what's going on and think about concepts like democracy, think about concepts uh, such as freedom. Another role that we think is really important is the cartoon should stir up debate. Uh, when this, was, uh, this cartoon was published on our website, we probably had, I think there was two weeks of discussion going on uh, from people in the Middle East and people in Europe, people from other countries, all discussing about the nature of religion, the, the role of women in religion. And it's very important, uh, I think, also for students, also in schools, that there's discussions about these things. And cartoons, and visuals are a really powerful way to do that. Um, this is a pretty simple cartoon. It's basically two figures and two words, and yet you can talk two weeks about it. A third role that we think is really important is cartoons have the power to analyze. Cartoons have the power to really get to the heart of an issue. Um, and in this case, it's a cartoon that, that asks why AIDS is bad for Africa. It talks about corruption, uh, it, it, it talks about foreign aid, and uh, the thing that makes this cartoon so powerful is it's done by an African cartoonist, and we believe that the people who are best suited to talk about problems and to, uh, to show us perspectives on particular problems are those who live in the context where those problems matter. Uh, and 
I'll show you our digital newsroom in a moment. Uh, but we also give students the opportunity to chat and to talk and to interact with these cartoonists. So they really get to know all these people from around the world with different perspectives. So we're here to learn about new learning environments and about future classroom technologies. Um, so now I'd like to take, uh, to present our case study, our project we did uh, this year, which was actually for Cartoon Movement, the first educational project uh, we ever did. So we had no idea how editorial cartoons would actually work um, with, uh, with kids. In this case, it was a group of students uh, from age 15 to 18, 14 to 18. Uh, and what we did is um, we made a special section in our website, uh, which I'll show you in a moment, on which uh, the kids and the cartoonists could collaborate. And the kids came up with sketches and ideas, uh, and then the cartoonists turned them into professional cartoons. And in the end, we, uh, we made a book, uh, which I'll show you in a moment as well. Um, the focus of this project was the Millennium Development Goals and European Development Policy. And the cool thing about this project was, of course, that these things are really good to get multiple perspectives because cartoonists in Europe was a very different vantage point uh, on the uh, European development policy than an African or an Asian or a South American cartoon as well. So, some numbers we worked with five high schools throughout the Netherlands, uh, 15 classes, uh, higher education, uh, pre university classes, um, 300 students aged 14 to 18, and in the end, we got over 400 cartoon ideas submitted. So by students and cartoonists working together, they came up with 400 ideas for cartoons uh, for the Millennium Development Goals. And in the end, we selected 98 cartoons for, for that. And we published in a book we called The Point of Truth, uh, Kids and Cartoonists Collaboration. Uh, and that book is actually now used in high schools in the Netherlands to teach about the Millennium Development Goals and to teach about the value of the visual message and the value of editorial cartooning. So, well, here are again some cartoons that are in the book uh, from, from various people. And you can see again, we use powerful symbols, uh, universal symbols. For instance, in this cartoon, if you look at the top half of the globe, you'll see the, the characters wearing top hats. And you can chat about them, and, uh, and in that way, we, at the end, we selected uh, uh, the ones we liked the most. Well, this, this is from the Egyptian cartoonists, and that's also the cool thing about having an international uh, uh, international network. It's uh, in Egypt. The role of social media during the Arab uprising was huge. At least that's what the Egyptians think themselves. The fun thing is, in other parts of the world, when you talk to people, you talk about social media and the impact it has. People are pretty skeptic. Uh, but in Egypt, when we took the Egyptians. I think Facebook and Twitter really saved them. So it's it's a, it's a unique, it's a valid perspective, and it also tells you something about where the cartoonist is from. So that way, you learn how perspectives are shaped by by the place you're from. Well, this is uh, an African cartoonist who talks about arms trade. And again, the, the, the cool thing about this is that students can actually talk to, to Popa, in this case, Popa Ntuma as the cartoonist, and they can say, hey, why did you do this cartoon? What's your idea behind it? Uh, could you do a cartoon on this and this? And that way, really get involved in the issues. Um, another theme I wanted to quickly show you is about environment and natural resources. Um, that's also a really popular theme. And this is one, when we started the project, I went around to all the schools and did a, like I'm doing here, basically a quick workshop uh, about editorial cartoons and about how editorial cartoons are used, what their function is, and uh, what their added value is. And one of the cartoons that I always show is this one about greenwashing, because uh, it's such a good way to explain greenwashing. Greenwashing uh, companies presenting their image to the outer world, out to the outer world greener than that they actually are, uh, which is perfectly depicted by a guy painting chimney stacks green while the smoke that's bellowing out is still as polluting as ever. Uh, and the cool thing was that it was, the idea was taken by a student, uh, and she took it a little bit further. She said, hey, the smoke could also be green, and then the, the chimney stacks would be almost like trees. And then you have a cartoonist who takes the idea one step further, and in that way you get a really collaborative process, and in the process, they, they learn a lot, they interact with international cartoonists and they, they learn a lot about the issue at hand. So here's another sketch. Uh, most of the kids worked on the computer, by the way, I didn't expect that, but it's a uh, sign of the times. And here's the end result. Um, here's uh, another cartoon. I always put this in the presentation because it's probably the weirdest cartoon we have. Um, and uh, we've had, I, when I do this in class, I always ask people what they think about cartoons, people think about cartoons. They're so 
interpretable, so there's no wrong answer with this cartoon. You can get about hunger, it's about maybe about fast food. Um, I've had, I think, almost 50 different explanations of this cartoon, um, which I think makes it really valuable. And, and it's also uh, the function of a cartoon is to make you think, and this cartoon does just that. Just that. So here's another one uh, about the environment that we included in the book. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up now, but one thing I wanted to show you is that we also do comics journalism uh, and we're thinking about ways to use that for education. We know that editorial cartoons work really well in this way, but comics journalism is a new form where we use comics to talk about difficult issues, to talk about societal problems. So here, uh, this is a journalist who went to Afghanistan and reports from the ground in Afghanistan about the situation there. Uh, and he draws about it, so it's a real life story only in a comic. Um, here's one about the abortion debate in, in the United States. Um, so these are really serious issues which we take and we visualize. And again, it's about the power of the visual and the power of the visual to convey the message to, to an audience. Uh, this is about a, a bomb in Afghanistan blowing up uh, an army truck. And it's also a personal experience which is translated to a comic. So it's, it's really powerful. So let's wrap it up by, by what we actually offer. Um, as I said, uh, the Kids in Cartoonist project was our first educational project, but what we do have now is we, we have the ability to use any of our cartoons. We uh, have an archive of over 600 editorial cartoons from around the world, um, and there's a new one added daily. So, and they're really cool to use in your classroom, so you can uh, have students write essays about it, or you can uh, have them give presentations about it. Uh, and if you want to, we have a teacher's guide available, that, that way you can buy, that, that way you also support the editorial cartoons who make the cartoons, uh, which will give you some pointers and some background into symbology, uh, into uh, uh, options, uh, in which ways you can use the cartoon in your platform for, for uh, to use in your teaching method. Um, we do also offer an online cartoon workshop in about 15 minutes. I, in the Netherlands, I travel around and do this at schools, but unfortunately, our, my boss won't allow me to uh, travel around the world to do this stuff. So we have it available online, um, which you can buy, you can show to your students, and we always start with an online workshop if you want to do the third option, which is we, we can offer to schools and institutions uh, the ability to have a dedicated newsroom, um, which We'll set up according to the theme that you want, and, and then we can get a collaboration going between your students and cartoonists. Uh, and this is uh, what, what we've been doing in the Netherlands, and we'll continue into the next year with uh, a number of other schools. And we'd really like to uh, to be able to do this internationally as well. So that's why we're giving this presentation here today. Um, well, this is the website. Uh, we also have a stamp. We can be found at D132 if you're interested to talk to us and talk about the possibilities. Uh, and if you're interested, you can also uh, get a book there from uh, the project. So thank you very much. <laughs>